212, can you hear me clearly? All right, I think we're good to go. What up, everybody? My name is OP. I'm the Artist Relations Manager for Serato, and today I'm really glad to be here. First off, big, big shout out to, to Ron for putting this all together to the whole Detroit Electronic Music Conference. We're putting on this uh, incredible online event. Uh, we hope to be back in person, hopefully next year, after all this COVID stuff has passed. But in the meantime, we keep things rocking. So today, I'm going to be going over Serato Studio. Serato Studio is the new DAW beat maker that Serato has put out. Uh, it's actually been out for about close to two years now, uh, but a lot of improvements have been made over the time period. And I'm going to show you some of those things and kind of walk you through how to make a beat inside of the program. So first thing I'm going to do before we get started, is I'm going to share my screen here and just kind of walk you through very quickly uh, where you can get information about Serato Studio. So if you go to serato.com forward slash studio, you'll be able to find all the information about Serato Studio. Uh, here, uh, you, if you go to the downloads, you can download the program. There's a few different ways that you can do the download. The first way is you can do the free version if you just want to try it out, right? So you come here, download it. It gives you limited options in regards to what you can do uh, in regards to the amount of scenes and instruments uh, and audio tracks that you can use, but you can get a lot done with it very easily. Uh, so you can do the free version. If you don't want to do the free version, you can come up here under the pricing tab here and you can either subscribe or buy it, right? Under the subscription is $9.99 a month you get all of the free sounds that come inside of Serato Studio. You can cancel it anytime and then turn it back on when you need to. So if you're on a little bit of a budget, you can turn it on for a little bit, turn it off and then turn it back on when your budget's right. Or you can buy it straight out for $199, which gives you everything as well, including all the free sounds. Uh, all the sounds that are here that come with the program are all royalty free. So you can use these sounds without having to worry about paying uh, any royalties uh, or licensing fees. Uh, if you put some music out using these sounds and you make a hit record, right? Uh, there are a bunch of different sounds that are based upon different types of genres. So you have kind of electronic music, you got trap, you got kind of more, more kind of 90s hip hop style stuff. And then we have a bunch of artist packs as well. So this more recent one that we've done is with the uh, uh, Afrobeats artist, Jules. And he's put a bunch of sounds together uh, from his personal collection to use that are really great. That magnificent Jazzy Jeff, DJ Jazzy Jeff, a really great friend of Serato. He made an incredible pack with a bunch of great sounds inside of it. Uh, and again, you get his sounds plus some of his scratches as well that you can use inside of the program. So it's pretty cool. Uh, other people have included uh, Just Blaze, uh, Flash Shadamas, Track Girl, Stolen Drums, uh, and a couple others as well. So again, all these sounds that are here are free for you to be able to use and get busy with, okay? So again, go to serato.com forward slash studio and you'll be able to get all this information. There also are a bunch of tutorials there as well. So if you're looking to make a certain type of music, whether it be hip hop or trap, house, EDM, lo-fi, whatever the case may be, or want to figure out certain functions to use inside of the program, you can come here to watch the tutorials as well. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use it pretty quickly here, but again, if you wanna go back and take it slow, go watch the tutorials. So that's all the information that's there at serato.com. Let's get into Serato Studio. So when you open up Serato Studio for the first time, as you see it on the screen here, uh, you'll notice that you have basically two decks that are here. You have a left deck and a right deck. It's kind of made almost in the sense that you're uh, almost DJing, but you're using that DJ workflow actually to make music, right? So on the left deck, on the left side is where all your content is gonna live. It's gonna be your drum decks, your sample decks, your audio, I'm sorry, your, um, your instrument decks, or even your plugin decks, if you wanna use VSTs or audio units plugins. On the right is where you're gonna sequence each one of those decks. So for example, over here, I have a drum deck. I have some sounds that are here. Hopefully you can hear those all coming through, this 808 kit that's here. And on this side here is where I would sequence those drum sounds, right? So in the middle, we have a mixing channel. And with the mixing channel on the left side is going to be the EQ, the gain EQ filter and volume for each of the individual sounds that you select. So when I select this kick here, you'll notice that it's highlighted here. You see the kick here. You'll notice that all the parameters that are associated to it are in the same color as the kick. And also here where it says mix, it'll tell you what the name of the sample is that you're using, right? So with that being said, again, gain, EQ, filter, volume, and also attack, release, reverse, voice mode, tempo for time stretching, and key shifting. So you can do a lot to shape your sounds very easily. The mixer on the right side is going to be 
the mixer that you're going to use for the sequence that you're working with, right? So if you want to EQ the whole sequence or gain the whole sequence or filter the whole sequence or adjust the volume for the whole sequence, you can do that there very easily, right? Down below, below, below on the bottom here is the library. Now, if you're used to using Serato DJ, this is gonna be the exact same kind of format of the library as you would see if you were DJing inside of Serato DJ Pro or even Serato DJ Lite, right? So for example, uh, in regards to sounds that you can use for Serato Studio, we have a tab for drums. Now, those packs that I talked to you about earlier, those packs will load into these sections automatically once you install them. So you have a bunch of drums that are available, both one shots and kits that are available. You have a bunch of audio samples that are available, uh, loops and one shots that are, are there. Uh, you have a bunch of Serato effects that are available. So everything's from uh, bit crushers and delays and EQs and flangers and limiters, a bunch of stuff that you can use to kind of shape your sounds, right? You also have, also have a bunch of instruments too. So bass, keys, uh, pianos, pads, lead synths, so on and so forth, all those things there. Now, again, as I was saying previous, if you wanna use your VSTs, your audio units or your uh, VST uh, plugins, you have access to those as well, right? Both as instruments and also as effects. Uh, also kind of going down here is a bunch of patterns that come with the program that you can use. So if you're uh, trying to figure out a way to make a certain style of music and you want a pattern to kind of inspire you, you can pull a pattern in and use it. Uh, you can dig through your files in your library, pull stuff up and throw it into studio. And what's also very interesting at the top here is that you have access to your entire Serato DJ library. So if you want to take a song from your DJ library, throw it into Serato studio and remix it and then put it back out to be able to play it, you can do that very easily. We're gonna use the library a little bit later on, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is show you how you can actually record audio into Serato Studio. So with this new version, Serato Studio 1.6, which is available right now, just came out last week, we've added audio recording to the program. So now you can record vocals, you can record instruments, uh, anything that you want to be able to plug in through an interface, you can do so. So in this setup that I have right here, which I'll put on the overhead real quick, I have my turntable with the record, I have my S11 mixer, and that's going straight here into Serato Studio. So I'm going to go over here in the library section to where it says song view, and I'm going to click on it. And this gets me into the arrangement view, but also where I can add audio tracks as well. And it's very easy to add an audio track. I'm actually going to delete this one here and start over brand new. So right here under your scenes, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, we have add audio. And when I click on add audio, this will now give me an audio track. Uh, if you have it set up inside the preferences inside of Serato Studio, you can set the inputs and outputs and so on and so forth if you need to, uh, to be able to get audio coming in. So I have mine set for the uh, DJ MS-11. And I can also, if I want to, use the input monitoring to listen to it before I start to record to see what's happening uh, and set the input for the channels that I want it to come in as well. So here it's already set and good to go. So here, I'm just going to record this vinyl break, and we're going to probably use this in some form or fashion as we start to kind of make a beat really quickly, right? So really quickly, just listen to this. Okay, so I have a little drum break there, right? And I'm gonna pick it up from this kick here when it starts. So I'm gonna do a quick count in with the record button, and then I'm gonna start to record the audio in. As you're gonna do that one more time, I actually turn the volume up just a little bit there, real quick. So I'm gonna stop that, and let's do another audio track very quickly. And let's actually just Listen to it one more time. Okay, so here we go one more time. Okay, good. So that's all we need right there. So I'm going to stop it there, right? Now, what's interesting is this, is that the BPM for this uh, session is 120 beats per minute, but obviously that wasn't 120 beats per minute. So what we're going to do is do a quick little analyzing of the file to make sure that we can grid it and get it right, right? So I'm going to go back into the library section. And in the library, I'm going to go to the audio samples tab. 
And here we have the recordings here, right? So under the recordings, this is where all your recordings are gonna be saved at, right? So here goes this one here, and we can listen to it real quick. Okay, so we know that it recorded in fine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to analyze the file. So it analyzes it, it tells you that it's about 86 beats per minute, uh, and that it's an A sharp minor. So back over here in this audio tab, I'm going to get rid of this audio track. I don't need it anymore because we recorded the sound. And I'm now going to drag this recording that I did over into an audio deck. And here, now you can see that it's gridded the song. And I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what's going on. But you can see that basically at the beginning here, this is the first grid and then each note is catching pretty evenly without any issue. And I only need a couple things here to work with, right? Now, what's great about this as well is that now when I play this back, it's going to play back at the BPM that it uh, analyzed it at, which is 82 or 85 beats per minute. And I can change this to be whatever I want it to be. So if I play this back now, and I'll play that with the metronome too, so you can hear it with the metronome. Let's play, bring that back. So that's pretty good. Right, really fast. I was able to be able to record some audio in, be able to analyze it. It tells you what the key is, and also it grids it to make it set to where I can start to use it and get busy. Right, so pretty good on that. Now, what I'm going to do now is this: is I'm not going to use this as a loop. I'm actually going to chop this up and use this as a drum break with the individual uh, sounds, kick, snares, hi hats, so on and so forth. Right. I might do some loop stuff later on, but I'm probably not going to do that right now. So I'm gonna get rid of this audio track. Again, we don't need it. I'm gonna go back to my library. And in my library, I'm going to make a sample deck. So I'm gonna press add sample here. So now I can drop a sample into here. And I'm going to grab that audio track that I just recorded and drop it in to the sample deck. And you can see here that again, it's following that same grid. And it's also set up some cue points for me. You can uh, play those. And the cue points, you can play them in a couple of different ways. You can play them either on your computer's keyboard whether it be using the numbers one through eight for each of the individual chops that it gives you. You can also use your QWERTY keyboard, so Q, W, S, and so on and so forth. Make that happen that way. Or you can use a MIDI keyboard as well, right? So here, you can see here. I can use that very much easy as well, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some quick regions for these individual hits. I want that kick, let me expand this out a little bit. I'm using the plus and minus sign on the keyboard here to expand this out. So I'm gonna create a region by just dragging this little anchor here at the bottom going forward, right? Go to the next one, that nice little snare there. I like it, so I'm gonna drag that out a little bit to see what it sounds like. I'm gonna take out a little bit of that hat. And then go to the next one, do the same thing. And I'm only need a couple of these, I don't need too many of them. But we know that when people play drums naturally, the hits are going to be different from each other. So some snares might sound louder or are hit in a different way than the other, and the same thing with the kicks. So you might want to have a few of those to play around with. So do the same thing here. I like that snare a lot right there. And I'm just gonna bring this one back just a little bit so it lands a little bit there. There we go. And the last part, I'm going to do that little roll, which I might use in some form or fashion in the track. Okay? So we got all these pieces here. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is I want to shape these sounds a little bit. I want to kind of like make them a little bit tighter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into... Uh, trigger mode. Now, there are two different modes that you can use for the samples inside of Serato Studio. You can do trigger mode and you can do hold. Right now, it's in hold, which means I need to hold down on the pad or the button or the key in order for it to play through all the way, right? I want to put it into trigger mode to where I just need to tap it and it's going to play without me having to hold it. Just like that, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is with the release here, Just give it a little bit, make it a little bit tighter. There we go. Same thing with the snare.
Same thing with this kick here. I'm gonna leave that one as it is for right now. Now what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna take the sync off for both of these, both the PM sync and also the key sync, because I want the drums to play natural. Now, the great thing about Serato Studio is that anytime that you throw a sample into the program, regardless of what the BPM is, what the key is, everything's gonna sync together. I want the drums to stay as they are, but I want all the other samples to sync together. And I'm gonna show you that in a couple of minutes. Okay, cool. Now. This BPM is a little bit too slow for me, so I'm going to bump this up a little bit. I'm going to bring this up to about 106 or so. Okay, good. Now, what I want to do is I want to basically start to record these drums in uh, as a pattern, right? Uh, the thing I want to do also is I want to make sure that poly is turned on over here instead of mono over in the top left corner. So a poly allows you to play multiple uh, pads at the same time versus mono, which would be only one pad at a time. Uh, one thing we could cut off from the other, right? So if I wanted to kind of do the kick and the snare at the same time, then I have the option to be able to do that, right? So over here in the sequencer, I have my grid set up, and I'm in the first scene of this track, right? Now with the scenes, you can have multiple scenes, uh, and your scenes are basically your, your parts of your song. So your intro, uh, your verse, your chorus, uh, your bridge, your breakdown, so on and so forth, even your outro, right? Uh, and then variations of those things. For each scene that you make, you can go up to eight bars. So right now I'm in scene one, and then this is the bar that I'm in right now in that scene. If I want to make this a wider scene, I can go with the plus sign, and now I can have two bars. I can also increase this as well to be able to go to four bars and then again to eight bars, right? So I can go up to eight bars if I want to in a scene. Right now, I'm just gonna keep it, uh, let's do it on, let's do two bars right now. Actually, we'll do, we'll do four bars, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Over here, we have a metronome at the top in the left corner. We also have our quantize that's set up so we can quantize as we're playing. And then here is where we're going to record inside of the sequence here with the play and the record button here. So I'm going to just play around real quick, uh, just kind of get a sense of what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to start recording those drums first. So starting back from the beginning. When I press record, actually, sorry, let me bring it back to the first bar there. There we go. And I'm going to press record. Okay, so we got that really easy, right? Let's add a snare in there. Okay, so we'll do that real quick. One more time. There we go. I'm gonna go back to that second one there. And I can also draw notes in two, which is really great. So if I missed a note, one thing I can do is just take here my mouse, click on this, and then I can make the note, and then it's set and it's good to go, right? Now, what's great about having these notes here now is that I can do a couple of things. The one thing that I really wanna do is I wanna swing the drums. So here with the swing knob, I can turn the swing knob up a little bit to give it a little more flair as it plays, right? So I'm gonna bring it down low, play it first. Turn it up. So it's got a nice little bounce to it. 
Now, if I want to go extreme with the swing, I can go way, way far. So I can take this up real, real high. I'm just going to get kind of steppy. Right? So if you want to make those kind of really weird steppy beats, you can do that. Um, and you can change the value of the swing, either it being in 16th or in 8th. So if I bring this to 8th, it's going to be really, really steppy. Right? So let's bring that back to 16th, and we'll bring it down to about like maybe 25% or so on the swing. Okay, so we got a little vibe going on, right? I like this. All right, now what I want to do from here is I want to go back into the Serato Studio Library and add some more drums to make this happen. So here at the top, when you open up Serato Studio uh, every session that you do, it's going, going to give you a drum kit that's going to be the clean 808 drum kit, right? And with this drum kit, you'll be able to basically use 808s, kicks, claps, hi-hats, so on and so forth, uh, to kind of use and shape, you know, uh, the beginnings of what your, your sequence is or your sound is, right? Um, if you want to, you can also change those sounds. But right now, I'm going to start with this and then change the sounds as we go along. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the kick here and just start punching in some kicks. I'm just going to draw them in. Here we go. I'm going to do that for each of the scenes here. Now, the other way that you can do this if you want to draw notes in, is you can go to an empty cell. So I'm going to go to the hi-hats here. And if I right click on the empty cell, I can go to fill in. And with fill in, I can choose the value that I want to fill it in. So I'm going to go here for eighths. Uh, let's do fourths here real quick. So I have some hi-hats there. Now nah, let's actually change it around. So let me undo that, Command-Z. And I'll change this now to fourths. And let's listen to how this sounds now. Uh, sorry, one, one more time, eighths. There we go. There we go. So listen, listen to how these two things sound. This is now going to be the sample kick and snare that I sampled from the record, along with now the sounds from Serato Studio sequenced together. Okay, cool. Now, I want to apply the same swing that I did from the first one onto the next one. So I'm going to go here to swing and increase the volume up to about 25%. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now, these hi-hats are a little bit too loud. So I want to go here to the hi-hat, select on it. And now for the channel for the hi-hat, I want to just bring the volume down a little bit. Okay, cool. So that sounds pretty good. Now, for that kick sound that we have here, that good old 808 sound, I want to put something in here a little bit different. So I'm going to go to the drum uh, 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 section of the library here, and I'm going to go to the all drum one shots. Now remember, you have drum one shots and you have drum kits. If I really wanted to, I could take a whole drum kit and put it in here. So I'm going to actually swap that in first before we change around the kit. So if I wanted to, while it's playing, I could throw in a kit and it's going to change those sounds that I have there. So let it play. Actually, I kind of like that kick. It's pretty good. It's pretty whole right there, right? And I have some other sounds that are in this kit as well. Maybe I'll use this sound here, this little stick here, right? So let's figure out the stick. So I'm going to record that really quickly. Okay, and I'm just going to bring that volume down on that stick a little bit as well. And let's record that in as well. Okay, so we got a little vibe going on here. 
with the drums, right? Now, again, if I wanted to, I could go to the all drum one shots here in the library, and I could go here with this little white arrow here, go down, and I could, if I want to choose any of the individual sounds here to replace them. I want to clap, so I'm gonna go to the clap here, and let's just go listen to some claps real quick. I like this clap here, so I'm gonna click and drag it and load it directly into the cell where I want it to be at. There it is, and maybe I'll do some time stretching on the clap. Let's see what happens. Now nah, maybe I'll keep it back up to where it's at. And let's record that in as well. And I'll turn the volume up a little bit on the clap as well. Okay, cool. So as you see, I can easily just program drums very simple inside of Serato Studio. Now, one thing that's pretty cool, I'm just going to make another drum kit real quick, just to show you one of the things that you can do, which is pretty fun with Studio, is let's say that you have a kit that's inside uh, one of the decks here. Let's say this uh, it's a slap drum kit, right? And let's say that you're new to making beats, right? And you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I want to try to figure out how to make a trap beat or a house beat or a... Um, reggaeton beat or whatever the case may be, right? But you don't understand necessarily how to sequence uh, each of these uh, different types of genres. So what you can do is over here where it says make, when you click on this drop down, you can choose a genre of your choice, right? So for example, if you want to make a trap song for, for whatever reason, right? Then when you choose trap and you press it, it's automatically going to give you a preset pattern to start working with. Now, if you want to, you can go in and change this around. Again, change the drums, add more drum uh, patterns in as you're going along by being able to draw in or record over them. Or what you can do is press it again and see what else it gives you. So as it's going, I'm just going to keep on pressing and you're going to hear how these uh, patterns start to change. I'm also going to change the genre now. So let's go to something a little more housey and see what happens here. So again, you can do these things if, however you want to. And again, you can change the BPM for all these things as well to make them all work. Right now we're a little bit slower, so the house thing doesn't hit as much but maybe a house pattern at a slower, slower uh, BPM might work for you in a different way, right? So it's pretty interesting what you can do there, really easy. So I'm gonna get rid of that, I don't need it right there. Now let's go ahead and add some melodic samples into this and see if we can kind of build something out here. So in the audio samples, you can go to again, the all samples loops, or you can go to the all samples one shots and then start to choose something to work with, right? Now, the majority of these sounds are gonna automatically loop when you go to play them, right? So you can just literally throw it in and then just kind of watch it just loop and come together. Now, what's also great about this is that if the loop is in a different key and or in a different uh, uh, key, uh, key uh, sorry, key and BPM, then what the session tempo and key is, that sample is gonna automatically key sync to the session for you. So you don't have to sit there and worry about time to time, stretch it and make sure it's in the right key and all the rest of it. It does it for you automatically, right? So let's go through a couple of these sounds here in the loops. Again, these are all royalty free samples. Some really pretty stuff here. Some more darker stuff. A lot of little hi-hat patterns and things here. Grab this one here, this one called Serenade, right? I'm gonna load it in. So I'm gonna click and drag it over here and load it in. And now what you'll notice is this. Now Serenade is, get this out the way here so I can see what's happening. Okay, good. Serenade is by uh, its original key in A minor and original BPM 
is also 77, but now it's gonna automatically key sync and BPM sync to 106. So when I play it with the first cue point, it's gonna play as such, right? Now there's a couple of ways I can get this in as a MIDI note. I can record it by pressing the pad. All these chops here. Now these chops actually are pretty cool because what Serato is doing is it's finding different transients that it thinks that you're going to be able to work with in order to be able to, uh, you know, maybe chop up the, the song or whatnot. And you can do your own individual ones if you want to by clearing them all out or use the ones that it gives you, right? Uh, here, I just want to play the sample straight through just as an example. So I'm going to click on this here. And if I just click and drag, you do this from the first one here, click and drag across all the different bars. As you see it flash at the top, it's telling me that I'm dragging the note all the way across, right? And now when I go to play this, this should all loop. Okay, so works pretty easy, right? Didn't have to do but so much work, which is really, really great, right? Uh, now what I want to do is I want to find another sample to add on to this. Now again, remember the power of what Serato Studio has is that it's going to always key sync and BPM sync everything together because it's using the Serato's pitch and time algorithm to make all this stuff happen. And pitch and time is the best algorithm for time stretching on the market, hands down, right? So every time I throw something into this, it just automatically starts to key sync and lock in, right? I'm going to go find another sample. Uh, this one I'm going to find, I know what it is already, so it's called weirdness. This one right here. Okay, and I'm gonna click and drag it into the deck. And now it's gonna give me another sample deck to start working with. And here, when I play this, it's playing in the BPM and also key synced now to the track. Now, I don't need the whole thing. I just need that first little part there where that first cue point is at. This one right here, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is the first thing is I'm going to actually come here to where the BPM is up at the top in the uh, sample deck, and I'm going to halftime this so it plays in halftime. Okay, and now I'm going to just drag that across some of the bars real quick. Let's see here. Right, I'm going to actually drag it across one more time over to the second bar. And I'm going to do the same thing separately for bars three and four. OK, here we go. OK, there it is, pretty easy. With the Serenade, I'm going to bring the volume down a little bit and bring down some of the bass as well. I'm going to probably add a bass line in here. Okay, got a little vibe going on, right? Again, these samples is locking in very easily. I'm going to find one more sample. Uh, there's a sample, a xylophone sample. Uh, beautiful xylophone. <laughs> drag it in to make another sample deck. Now, what's great about sample again, or Serato Studio again, is that all these samples are gonna key sync and lock in together. Now, this is a far stretch in regards to the BPM range, right? We're at 106. The previous samples were in like the 70s area. This sample was at 120, and it's also an E minor, right? So we're kind of going all over the place. But now, because it's inside of Serato Studio, it's going to key sync and lock in. <laughs> Really easy, right? So what I want to do is I just want to kind of add this in in a couple places real quick. So I'm just going to draw some notes in. Do it again over here. And again, I could record this in if I wanted to as well, but I'm just doing this for the kind of speed of time for everything that's going on. And this one here, I want to drag out just a little bit further. So this is this now. I'm 
just gonna fix these last ones here real quick, just drag it out a little bit more so I get some more of the note that's coming in. Okay, good, here we go. <laughs> Okay, good. Now, with this being set up the way it is, this note kind of ends a little dry, right? So now I want to use some serato effects to kind of give it a little more life. So up above the left deck is going to be the effects tab. And with the effects tab, what I can do is now for each of the individual pads in the drum deck or sample deck, I can add up to three effects, or I can do three effects for the whole sequence that I'm working in. So for here with this sequence, that I'm working in, I'm going to go down the effects and go to the echo and add an effect. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this up a little bit and let's play this through and see how it sounds now. Actually, I'll, I'll solo it so you can hear the echo taking place. So that works really easy, right? I was able to add the effect in, works beautiful, right? Again, there are a bunch of effects. I can add on if I wanted to a flanger or a phaser or a bit crusher or do anything I want to in it to kind of make it work, right? But here, really simple. I just want to keep it to where the echo is running and doing its thing. Uh, again, the drop down has a bunch of different uh, effects that are available, Serato effects, right? If you wanted to, you could also go back into your library. Remember that there is the um, plugins tab. And there in the plugins tab, you can use your Serato, uh, sorry, your VST and audio units effects. So if you have certain uh, effects from any company that you're working with, whether it be Isotope or um, uh, Waves or Native Instruments, uh, any of those that, that you know, even uh, Universal Audio stuff, you can plug those in here and start to use them very easily, right? So lastly, let me get a little baseline in here. So I'm going to go to the instruments. And I'm going to go to the bass here, and I'm going to get this one here, the 808 head uh, explosion bass. And I'm going to drag this in, right? Now, with this bass here, um, I can do a couple of things. The one thing I can do, which is going to be really simple, is use this thing called playing key. Now, what playing key does is that it's going to force the keys, uh, sorry, the notes uh, that I play, the keys that I play, it's going to force them into the key of the session that I'm working in. So when I play the keyboard, let me put this overhead so you can see. So these two notes are being forced to play in the key. Right, so I can start to kind of work that really easy, right? Now, if I want to play it chromatically, I can turn playing key off, and now I can play it chromatically if I want to. Right? I'm going to leave playing key turned on. It's going to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to adjust the release a little bit. And now there's this thing called uh, with the glide. So a kind of portamento. So I can uh, kind of bend notes together if I want to as they overlap. But I don't want that really on for right now. So I'm going to bring that down. And let's listen to the track and play along with it and see what we can come up with. <laughs> Record something and move some notes around once I'm ready. So here we go. Okay, so those notes recorded in and they're all right here. And with these last notes here, I'm probably just going to bring them down a couple. So I'm going to uh, use the select tool here at the top, select them. Drag them down. So let's look like and listen to it. So maybe I'll take this note out. Okay, cool. So we got some notes in there. If I need to, I can take these notes and I can 
kind of shift them around by using a little cursor here, but I'm gonna leave them as it is right now just for this example, right? So I got a couple of things here that are going pretty good. Uh, the last thing if I wanna do is again, using the plugins, I can go over here to my plugins and I can choose an instrument to use. So I'm gonna just pull up a piano sound real quick. Let's drag this uh, Arteria V2 piano in here real quick. Give it a second to load up. There we go, we got the piano there. Now, the cool thing with the piano is that Again, you have the playing key option. So it's gonna play those notes, forcing them into the key of the session. And then you also have auto chords here. So when I turn auto chords on, you have the option to be able to play uh, chords with one note based upon the amount of uh, no, uh, notes that you want in the chord. So right now we have a three note chord. So I'll just press it here. Right, and I can make that a four note chord and so on and so forth, right? So I'll leave it at three and I'm gonna turn the feel up so it has a little bit of a strum. And I'll just record a couple little passes on the keyboard as well. So let me record something here real quick. Okay, and with those notes there, I'm gonna go to this last one. I think that should do it there. Okay, so we got the pianos there as well, right? So now with all these pieces all set and good to go, what I wanna do now is start to make different scenes where I can basically kind of break this all down. So I'm gonna copy this first scene to the second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one, right? And, and let's say this intro scene here, I don't want these pianos. So I'm gonna come up here to where it says clear and just clear out the pianos so they're gone. The same thing with the bass. I don't want the bass in the beginning. So I'm gonna clear that out. And I don't want the xylophone, so I'm gonna clear that out. Right now I'm just clearing the notes. The actual instruments are still there. I'm just clearing out the notes away. Uh, I wanna start off with this weirdness sound. So I'm gonna leave this one here. I'm gonna take out this serenade, clear that out, and I'm gonna leave the drums in. So the first scene will be this. Okay, now in the second scene, I wanna take out the pianos. So again, I'm gonna go to the pianos, clear those out. I'm gonna go to the bass and leave that. The xylophone I'm going to clear out. Uh, weirdness I'm gonna keep in, serenade I'm going to clear out. Okay, good. The third one, I'm going to take out the pianos. I'm going to leave the bass. I'm going to uh, take out the xylophones, clear that. I'm going to leave the serenade. So this is the third one. Okay, with this fourth one, I'm going to leave everything in except for the piano. Clear that out. And then the last one's going to have everything in it, right? So I have a bunch of pieces that I can work with. Now that I have these pieces, I can take these and now basically arrange them to make a song, right? So if I go into the library and under the library to the right where it says song view, I click on it. Now I can take these pieces and drag them down. It's basically like building a puzzle, right? Kind of put the pieces together how you want to, to have it work the way that you think it's going to flow and sound good, right? So I'm just gonna keep on dragging these down here and make a little song here. So keep on dragging down a couple more. Okay, and if I want to, I can select these and I can do Command D to copy them over a couple of times, right? So I'll do that a few times over 
and then maybe just do the intro as the outro again and then be done, right? And we're not gonna do a full song, but we're gonna kind of show what you can do uh, with an acapella from your Serato DJ library next. So really quickly, if I come down here and start to play, So you can see very easy, it's just playing the song however I sequence it, right? Now, back in my Serato DJ library, here, I'm gonna go to one of my crates, right, that I use for normally for DJing. And in this crate, I'm gonna go find this Brandy acapella, I Wanna Be Down. I would like to get to know if I could. Now, it's, an, it's at uh, 86 beats per minute, uh, and it's also uh, in a different key as well. So I'm gonna click this and drag this over into the song view. And when I drag it over, it's gonna create an audio track. And with that audio track, it's going to key sync it to the, uh, to the session as I'm playing. Now this is gonna sound a little weird because it's key syncing it a little bit too low, right? But let's play it to hear what it sounds like. And I'm gonna drag this over just a little bit to make sure it starts right where she should be coming in because she starts right before the one. So let's check this out. Let me move that just a little bit more. There we go. See right there, it's just automatically locked in. I don't have to do any kind of extra warping and things to make it work, it's kind of locked in right away, which is great. But her vocal is kind of low. So here what I want to do is make one or two choices. The first choice is this. I could take the sync off on her voice, right? And then I could potentially move it to a different key to make it match. I don't necessarily want to do that. What I really want to do is I want to come up here to the master, beat, uh, the master key, and I want to go here and I want to change this going back up a little bit. And now everything that I put in here, all the samples, plus her voice, everything that I have set is going to lock into this and work. Here we go. able to shift everything, all the samples that I had all locked in. And again, if I want to change that to be a different key, literally just press it and it'll change it. And I'll do that in real time real quick. And also change the BPM so you can see how easy and fast it is to manipulate it to where you want it to be. I would like to See, I can make really drastic changes on the BPM and also the key. No artifacts, no pops, no glitches, 
nothing because it's using that pitch and time algorithm, that incredible algorithm to be able to do that incredible time stretching and make it sound all good and together and well, right? Once you're done with your beat, you've kind of finished all of what you want to do, EQ'd and all the rest of it, you can go down, sorry, you can go down here to the bottom. Let me move this screen out the way so I can see. Here we go. You can go down to the bottom to where the master is, right? Now, what's great about Serato Studio when you press the master is that you can see the waveform developing in real time while it's playing, which is great because a lot of times in other DAWs, you're listening, but you don't actually see what the waveform looks like before you export it out, right? Especially if you're gonna be DJing, you wanna make sure those waveforms are really chunky and sound really good and look really good for the sound, right? So as I play, you'll see the waveform developing. And if I want to, I can add in some mastering effects, right? So there's some Serato ones here, this Brightener EQ, this uh, compressor and this limiter, right? So I'm gonna turn these on. And as I'm turning them on and using them, while it's playing, you'll see that the waveform dynamically is going to change based upon what I'm doing, right? So you'll see visually what you're doing along with audibly hearing what you're doing. So you make sure you get the right kind of fit and feel for your song, right? So let's try this out real quick. So as you see there, as I was moving those uh, parameters, the Brightener EQ, uh, the master compressor and the limiter, you can see the waveform was changing as I was making those effects, right? So maybe you hear something, you're like, oh, maybe it sounds good, but maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But then you look at it and it looks way too distorted. Then you know, okay, maybe I can bring it down a little bit or maybe I need to bring it up a little bit because it's maybe too low, right? So this is very helpful and visual uh, for you getting your master together. When you're finished with your beat, again, uh, you can export it out and play it if you want to. So exporting it here, you can export it either as a WAV file or as a 320 MP3, or you can export the stems, right? So if you want to pass this on to a friend of yours uh, in their studio and have them play some instruments over it or sing over it or whatever the case may be, you can send them the stems. Everything will uh, render out, uh, consolidate it. And then also you can export out the individual drum pad uh, uh, pieces as a uh, different slices of audio, right? So if you want your kicks, your snares, your hi-hats from the Serato Studio sequences, you can do that uh, for the drum sequences, right? And then also, if you want to, to send it to your, uh, your master, you can do it to uh, the audio output for your stems by minus 6 dB, so that way you have some headroom for your master engineer to be able to master your track and get it done. Uh, once you bounce it out, all the stems have the names of the instruments plus the key and the BPM of the session, so no one ever has to ask you what it is, easily they know what it is, they pop it into whatever program they're using and they continue to get busy and make it happen. And then once that's set, you're done. You're having a great time making beats with Serato Studio, you're putting out stuff all the time and you are a superstar, you already are, but you're even more of a superstar because you're using Serato Studio. So that is a really quick kind of overview of what Serato Studio does. It does a bunch more as well, uh, but here I just want to kind of give you some real quick meat on how to build something very fast with the program. Usually within a day, I can make four or five different beats just throwing stuff into it and just locks in and matches up. And I don't have to think too much. The creativity keeps on flowing because the program's built to be able to match all this stuff together with that pitch and time algorithm that I was talking about before. So please do remember, I'll go back here to the website. You can go to serato.com forward slash studio. And here you can basically either download the free version of Serato Studio or you can do the subscription or buy it out straight up. So remember that subscription is $9.99 a month and that gets you basically all the sound packs with Serato Studio and then any updates that come with it every month or every other month whenever we add something new into it, you'll be able to get those updates or you can buy it outright for $1.99 and get those updates and all those free sounds as well. So that is the deal. Uh, once again, thank you to everybody as a part of the conference. Uh, big up to all the fam in Detroit. I really, really appreciate you. I look forward to being with y'all in person next year uh, with some more developments with Serato Studio and even Serato DJ as well. Um, and uh, yeah, Ron, man, I appreciate you so much. You are such a, a, a lifesaver for us in the music community. So thank you so much for putting this together, uh, making this virtual event happen. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you very soon.